We just got a correction from CBC News. Mo Wanzhong was expected to plead guilty and in fact, Mo pleaded not guilty as part of the first News about Meng's journey to back to China not only attracted public attention, but also a swath of misreports from many Western media outlets, leading to surge in corrections. How did they all manage to make the same mistake? Today, we look at how Meng Wanzhou's case has unsettled Western media outlets. Many Western media reports highlighted that Meng admitted she had described incorrectly Huawei's relationship with Skycong to HSBC, but left out the fact she had pleaded not guilty to her charges. NPR's correspondent Emily Fong said in a tweet, Meng signed off on admitting she committed a wire and bank fraud. This is a clear misrepresentation. The deferred prosecution agreement Meng struck with the US shows she precisely did not admit to fraud. NPR is not the only outlet who made the mistake. CBC News, the Canada's state broadcaster, reported Meng Wanzhou was expected to plead guilty and pay a fine. But it later published a correction, as you said earlier, admitting the fact Meng pled not guilty. Why did the free-thinking Western mainstream media respond to the Meng Wanzhou release by saying exactly the same thing? It is as if they wanted to paint the story of her release in a different light. Meng's return without legal penalties perhaps came as a surprise for many in the Western media because they were unprepared to see a release coming without a fine and a guilt pleading. But more importantly, news outlet seems not particularly keen to let readers know that. Another high-frequency phrase on the lips of the Western media has been hostage diplomacy. Some outlets cite the release of the two Michaels as evidence of a political exchange of hostages, labeling it as a hostage diplomacy. This is simply not true. Unlike Meng, the two Michaels confessed their guilt for crimes they committed in China and were released on bail for medical reasons. Even look at my own tweet. It received many likes when I posted, responding to a New York Times reporter, if it is hostage diplomacy, then it is Canada who kidnapped first. A deferred prosecution agreement provides a stepping stone out of the muddy water for the US and Canada. A DPA is just a tool used by the two countries to save face rather than admit they had actually done wrong. It is a fig leaf of American's political persecution. A DPA is not the same as a plea bargain or a sentence of probation. A defendant who submits to a DPA is not convicted of any crime, but charges are dismissed if the company complies with its obligation under the DPA. Interestingly, the media also highlighted the grand ceremony that Meng received upon her arrival back in Shenzhen and China's nationalism in heralding her return, implying Huawei might have some sinister ties with the Chinese government. Meng said in her speech, she is an ordinary citizen. A statement from China's foreign ministry says China is the strong backbone of every single one of its citizens. As for Huawei, it is a private company by any standard. I watched the live stream of her return on that night. I was so emotional. My friends were all sharing posts of Meng's return. The whole country cheered the moment because we see the story of Meng as the story of us all. Behind Meng's case, we see a failure of the U.S. in manipulating international rules and taking advantage of its allies. The U.S. wanted to coerce Huawei to hand over its technology by arresting Meng, like what it already successfully did to France Alston. But times have changed. The U.S. is no longer able to talk to China from a position of strength. Although some anti-China Western politicians are very angry about the case, overall, I think it is actually a very positive sign of relations among China, the U.S. and Canada. The U.S. and China have taken a further step after the two countries' leader had their recent phone call, and the remedial list China handed to the U.S. on Tianjin talks takes effect. One of the main obstacles for the China-Canada relationship has also been removed. China and Canada can look ahead as Trudeau resettles into the Prime Minister's office. With lessons learned from the case, the US and Canada can better understand China's determination to uphold its interests and that it cannot be easily shaken. 
paving the way for a future of fruitful cooperation.